Hi, this is the Democratic Alliance Weekly Labour Report. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this with your friends and family. I'd appreciate it. It's Friday the 4th of November 2022 and we're facing lots of issues and problems in the labour field. Well, obviously the issues I'm going to talk about today are various and a myriad of issues. One is the big civil servant strike, which I'll get through to later. The other one is suspension of civil servants, which has cost us a fortune. Uh, the problems within the supported employment enterprises. Uh, we're going to talk about moving the deck chairs on the Titanic. And obviously the public sector who have been offered the 3% and that strike where we're going to talk again about the deck chairs on the Titanic. Well, we do know various things. The first thing is, let's talk about these suspensions in the civil servants. We've spent uh, months, years, sometimes even a decade on trying to uh, handle civil servants who have caused problems. They put on suspension, they put on full pay, and we know that whilst they're on suspension, they get their increases, they get their bonuses, and they wait and wait and wait doing no work. Well, at the latest report in the last year, we have 305, I'm reading from this, 305 current civil servants waiting for their disciplinary hearings. And so far, it's cost us this year 130 million rand in salaries and all sorts of other perks. Uh, the provincial departments, about 90 million rand. And we've seen even in KwaZulu-Natal, that's 36% of it. Uh, it's very interesting that we have that. So thank you for listening to me. It's Michael Bagram, the Labour Report from the Democratic Alliance. I'm the Labour spokesperson. I want to move on to supported employment enterprises. This is an entity within the Department of Employment and Labour which employs people, normally from the disabled community, to make goods and services for departmental uh, use for various departments within government. Well, with, they had a wonderful order for furniture at schools, absolutely wonderful order. Everyone was elated, they made the furniture, they delivered the furniture, and they found that in fact one of the schools that ordered furniture didn't exist in the first place. The school didn't exist. So now they're busy suing each other. You can imagine the pandemonium where the supported employment enterprises under the Department of Employment and Labor is suing the Department of Education for the payment who didn't exist, the school that didn't exist. So it's, it's Alice in Wonderland all over. Now, one thing I did want to talk about and why I'm very interested in um, this report today is the changing of the deck chairs in the Titanic. We can rearrange all the deck chairs. Now, let me explain how it works. The portfolio committees of Parliament are supposed to act as some sort of oversight uh, to the various departments, to the various state-owned enterprises. Um, any government institution is to be have some sort of oversight. And one of the first ports of call for an oversight is the Portfolio Committee. Now, I belong to the Portfolio Committee of the Department of Employment and Labour. And every year we sit and we've just sat now and had a look at the third quarter um, of the Department of Employment and Labour. Now, let's just look at it in terms of a background. We have the worst unemployment crisis in the world. We have the second worst productivity in the world. So what does the department do is, and we've spoken about this before, is they set up the Shire, they set the test, they then take the test and they then pass the test and then the portfolio committee has to look at it. Now, unfortunately, uh, we've got the governing party, the ANC, who have the majority numbers on these committees, all of them, but in particular on the Department of Employment and Labour, and they then agree with the department on the test, on the fact that they passed the test, and then they all applaud it afterwards. And the Democratic Alliance, in its role as a proper oversight, has now asked to point out that there's something wrong, that it's not just wonderful plain sailing, that there is something wrong. And we do try and obviously argue that 
It can't be passing the test when we've got the worst unemployment in the world. We can't be passing the test when we've got the worst product, second worst productivity in the world. We can't be passing the test when the unemployment insurance fund has failed the workers of South Africa. We can't be passing the test when the compensation fund has failed the workers of South Africa. And in both those entities, the UIF and the compensation fund, in fact, couldn't even be audited by their own auditors, the Auditor General, because they haven't submitted their figures. So the Auditor General said, well, we can't even audit them, never mind fail them. We just can't look at them. But of course, the department itself is saying, no, we passed. And the Portfolio Committee then agreeing with the department that they did pass. Now, you might recall the Zondo Commission, Judge Zondo himself said that Parliament did not exercise its oversight role. Well, they didn't and they haven't and they won't until we have a change of government. Yes, there are minority reports. And yes, every time you read the minutes of these portfolio committees, you'll see people from the Democratic Alliance speaking up and saying that's not correct. It doesn't make any sense to heavily support these reports. The reports are supported by the uh, Director General, by the Minister, by the Deputy Minister, by the Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. Well, last week, I attended that portfolio committee to hear the report. And I looked at the third, third quarter and I saw the performance and the department, of course, failed dismally in my eyes because I had read the newspapers, I had watched television. I know what's going on to a certain extent in South Africa. But somehow, no, not, not for the committee to think about. We were worrying about filling some posts that hadn't been filled. We were worrying about uh, an, a visit that an inspector made to some factory. We were worrying about real nonsense. And yet we're on the cusp of a major strike. The civil servants were offered 3%. The civil servants had demanded 12%. There was an impasse. What did the Minister of Employment and Labour do? He unilaterally implemented the 3%, really angered the unions. I would also be angry because they hadn't been through the full consultation process. And we now have the unions declaring that they're going on strike. Now just think about this. This is half a million people will be out on the street on strike with all the sympathy strikes joining them. That's the mother of all strikes that is going to probably take place by the end of this year in South Africa. We're sitting on a time bomb. And what does the committee do? The committee that has to exercise oversight on the Department of Employment and Labour. We didn't even have it on our agenda. And no matter how much you talk to the chairperson of the portfolio committee, it goes right off the top of her head. The minister is not interested. The governing party, the ANC, is not interested. The DA is pushing very strongly for the CCMA to get involved before we destroy our country and to have arbitration in terms of the legislation. So thank you for listening to me once again. It's Michael Bagram, Friday the 4th of November 2022 from the Democratic Alliance. I really appreciate it.